Next on BYU Sports Nation, a question of quarterbacks. Which young gunslinger will rule the day tomorrow? BYU Zach Wilson or USC's Keaton Slovis? Defend LES with USC Washington and Boise State the next three home games. How many wins in those three are enough and realistic? Plus, what all BYU fans should expect from the 24th ranked USC Trojans when they very publicly invade Provo tomorrow. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Friday the 13th of September. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. We promise we won't scare you over the next hour. Or maybe we will. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with a guy lobbying to win the Porter Rockwell Award, Jerem Jordan. This is awesome. Eric Mateos, the offensive line coach, first-year guy, tweeted out that the uh, Porter Rockwell Protector of the Week Blue Grit Award (laughs) in 2019 for Week 1 went to Brady Christensen and then Week 2, Chandon Herring. If you don't know who Porter Rockwell was, basically he was Joseph Smith's bodyguard. And uh, there's some uh, crazy stories there, right? With good old Porter. <laughs> but he was a protector, right? And uh, I, I love that that's the nickname. Eric Mateos is not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but he appreciates uh, a guy who protects, and that was Porter Rockwell. Every team has their one unique award, it seems, these days in college football. Miami has the turnover chain. I mean, I've seen some weird things. Yeah, This is just BYU's stuff. version of a unique award. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. Can you give something to them on the sideline, though, to signify this? Like a fake beard or something? <laughs> That's not honor code appropriate. <laughs> How dare you? Just, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna report you to the honor code office. Velcro on this big old long fake. Board. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> under f- the helmet. Fantastic. And they forget and they wander out <laughs> to the field. There's today's show lineup. Ryan Abraham of 24/7 Sports, an insider for the USC Trojans, will tell us how legitimate this 24th ranked SC team is. Alevi Hifo, BYU receiver, one on one after practice, why he really likes the Cougars' chances at another upset. Our latest going for two picks and the return of No the Foe. I hope you've studied up, Jerem. Brush up on your USC knowledge. It's also time to brush up on today's BYUSN headlines. Starting with this. Hello, game day eve. BYU football hosting 24th-ranked USC tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. Head coach Kalani Satake working for his first career home victory against a ranked opponent. Defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki knows a BYU win likely starts and ends with keeping a very potent Trojan offense in check. They're really good on offense, I think. I think they're very, very in sync, even with the freshman quarterback. They... A lot of playmakers on the perimeter, got a lot of speed, and uh, good running back. I mean, it's it's a solid, solid offense. It's, I think it's a little bit different from the two previous offenses that we faced with, with all what they do, spread and throwing the ball, but um, it definitely has its challenges that we've got to make sure that we, we stop them. Countdown to kickoff. Your Everything You Need to Know pregame show starts at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, live on BYU TV. Cougars in the NFL this weekend. Taysom Hill and the Saints hit the road against the Rams in a rematch of the NFC title game. Pay attention to the refs in that one. And reportedly, Seattle Seahawks defensive lineman Ziggy Ansah is, quote, likely to debut against the Steelers Sunday. Oh, good luck to your Seahawks. They beat my Bengals in week one. Yeah, well, the Steelers will be a significantly more challenging team unless they play the Patriots. (laughs) Tenth-ranked BYU women's soccer. Beats number 12, oh, Texas yeah. A&M, 2-0 yeah. last night. That yes. was awesome. That was awesome. At Southfield to remain unbeaten at 5-0 and and legitimize that top 10 ranking a bit more. BYU 4-0 when they score first. Again, that is a key stat. Elise Flank makes it 2 to nothing. The pressure continues to mount for BYU, and it's a 2-0 lead at Southfield. Wow. Elise Flake with a brace. Nets both goals, goals in a three-minute span. Cougars trying to get to 6-0 at Utah Valley Monday night, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. What was up with the brace? Oh. Did meaning, she injure herself? No, no, no. Meaning she, she scores a brace, two goals. 
That's that's the that's verbiage. a word for that's, a brace. Yes, I've never heard that in my life. Soccer term: a brace equals two goals. I've never heard that a there single time in my life. There you go. We tweeted that out last night. I was like, why was she wearing a brace? What? <laughs> it's one of those weird soccer terms. Yeah. And five foot. I've never literally. I've called soccer for years. I've never heard that. I learned something today. Five former Cougars will be inducted into the BYU Athletic Hall of Fame uh, tonight. They are Austin Collier, football, volleyball is Carlos Moreno. Uh, gymnastics, Elizabeth Crandall Holmes, track and fields, Craig Poole, and swimming's Arunas Savickas. Yes. Uh, as hosted by your boy Spencer Lincoln. I'll be there. Tonight. Yeah. I'll be there. You won't All... just be there. You're leading, leading, emceeing the thing. Magic happens. <laughs> yes, it does. Tonight. Awesome. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. A quarterback competition for the ages. USC quarterback Keaton Slovis is 18 years young. The freshman leads the country in completion percentage at 83%. His counterpart, Zach Wilson, is a bit older and has an 18-for-18 bowl performance under his belt. Jerem, should we expect Zach Wilson, the older quarterback, to be the better quarterback tomorrow? Expect? No, I hope. Yes. Uh, Keen Slovis has played Fresno State the second half after JT Daniels, the starter for the season. Uh, well, expected to be towards ACL right before the half. Keen Slovis has played three halves, but he's been awesome. Fresno State was a 12 win team last year. That's a quality program. Uh, USC survived one by eight thanks to an interception late in the end zone. And then last week, just pummeled Stanford. I mean, this was the best game for a freshman QB in his first start ever at USC. And that's saying a lot. There have been some amazing quarterbacks who have played as freshmen uh, recently, right? Matt Barkley and uh, others, right? Um, No, reminder about Zach Wilson, by the way. He's a sophomore. He's going to be awesome, but it's still early. We expected him to pick up where he left off. Good performances against Utah and Western Michigan. Obviously, Western Michigan, perfect. But so far, he's thrown one TD in two games, uh, 220 yards a game, uh, through the air, 7.1 yards per attempt is 79th in the country. His pass efficiency of 123 is 95th. He can do better, for sure. 65% completion percentage is great. 250 a game would be nice. Average two TDs passing a game would be nice. Yet, BYU is pay- playing Power 5 teams. Utah's defense was really good. I, I don't think Tennessee is going to end up being that good, but BYU did what they needed to do, go on the road, win a game. Sometimes it's a little weird, a little dirty, a little awkward. BYU got the win. Now you're playing two tough teams in USC and Washington. I don't expect Zach Wilson to be the better quarterback per se, but this is Keaton Slovis' first road start. I think that could make it interesting. No, we shouldn't expect Zach Wilson to be the better quarterback tomorrow. For one, because he doesn't have four future NFL wide receivers running routes for him, led by Amon Ross St. Brown. Like, USC is loaded at receiver. I think I, I legitimately think... Their top four receivers will all play in the National Football League. They're really good. They're that, so good. Tyler Vons is averaging 128 yards a game right now. Okay. A game. I have that as excellent. A game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike mm-hmm. Simon had 127 last game. Mon Ross, St. Brown, uh, Michael Pittman, and then, uh, you know, Stephen Carr and Drake London. And, yeah, these guys are good. These guys are They're good. so good. So that alone tells me that we should expect – the freshman from USC to have a better week than Zach Wilson, just because he's throwing it up to some elite wide receivers. And I'm I not actually, using that word in vain. I actually agree with like, you on your use of they, elite for once. They're really good. It's going to take something remarkable from Zach Wilson for us to step back and say, oh yeah, he outperformed Keaton Slovis just because of the way the USC offense is set up. Like they're probably going to throw the ball 40 times, maybe more. I don't know. supposed to be a lot. Okay. It, Compared to what BYU typically does, right? Like USC, they've with thrown the, it seventy-five times in two games with yeah. the air raid. Yeah. They're going to throw it all over the field. It's going to take something special for Zach Wilson to outperform Keaton Slovis. But BYU has a more balanced attack, and I think Tyson Williams has a significant identity in this BYU offense, and we'll start to see that more tomorrow. So just tougher to do. Keaton Slovis' uh, high school quarterback coach, Kurt Warner. How about that? Mm. Topic two, let's discuss what happens with the different result possibilities tomorrow. Luckily, a tie is not uh, one of them. Spencer, what if BYU wins and what if BYU loses? Oh, what if BYU wins? Then they're guaranteed at least a two and two star, oh! Jerem. Can you imagine BYU yes. being two and one? I can't, yeah. That would be incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, a ranked win at home over USC. You yeah, stunned Tennessee. Two and one, you're starting to get some votes in the AP poll as Washington comes into town. The juice is really high, yes. And big picture, B 
BYU takes a major step toward a nine-win season yes. if they beat USC tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because they're not expected to win two of these first four. In fact, BYU's BYU's a dog in all four. Underdog in all four. They'll of be the first a dog four games. in all four. Correct. Yeah. If Chance. you're a dog at Tennessee, you're definitely a dog against ranked USC, ranked Washington. Washington will beat Hawaii. They will be ranked coming in next week. BYU right now four point underdog against USC. Four and a half in some spots. That's right. If BYU loses this game, then it's status quo. I think that BYU is on par to do what you and I both think they'll do, and that's seven-ish regular season wins, maybe get eight in the bowl game. Yeah, I said eight in the reg. I was ambitious. Yeah. I was ambitious. Status quo. Status like, quo. So like, BYU's, so not, BYU's supposed not supposed to win suppo this game tomorrow, and they're not supposed to beat Washington the week after that. So for me, it's like, oh, okay, that's disappointing. You never want to lose a game, but it doesn't derail the big picture expectations I have for this team. What do you got? If BYU wins, the offense found itself. Zach Wilson had a good game. Tyson Williams probably ran for a hundy. The defense created multiple turnovers. Ooh. Um, BYU gets votes, as you mentioned, and is the top 10 out. Uh, BYU's feeling like it can beat Washington next week mm -hmm. and get ranked going into Toledo. That's if BYU wins. If BYU loses, BYU staring at one and three, maxing out at eight wins this season. BYU lost a game it was probably supposed to lose anyways. Ranked team. Underdog at home, right? BYU's actually not been that great at home. We'll get into that uh, in a second. BYU would be a dog in all the first four games, as mentioned. And BYU is in danger of uh, having a losing record at home, which you've been highlighting this week as well. So hopefully BYU wins this, has the upset, and now BYU is in the conversation. BYU is in the undertow of college football re relevance right now with a double overtime win at Tennessee. But again, like Texas in 2013, the story is more about Tennessee and their demise as a program last year and this year than it is about BYU going and winning that game. That's just how it is when you're the underdog in the game and the lesser program in the matchup, although BYU is a top 40 program in college football in the last 40 years and recently, right? That's just how it is. But if BYU wins, that's, that's big time. Now, yes. now the blue goggles are starting to come on a little more. The story becomes about BYU if yeah. the Cougars beat USC tomorrow. Because yeah. then it's... Who is this team who just held on against Tennessee and then just beat USC? Right. And that would, like last year, we did not expect BYU to beat Arizona. We thought they'd beat Cal, but then they lost. They beat Wisconsin. They beat McNeese. And it's like, wait a minute, three and one? Are you kidding me? And then reality set in. You're playing a Washington team that was on a different level. Right? On to topic three. There is a good chance that BYU's first four home games will all be against ranked opponents, Utah, ranked. USC, ranked. 24. Assuming Washington beats Hawaii tomorrow, they'll be ranked. And then Boise State is lined up to be ranked when they come to Provo in a few weeks. All three next to each other in the AP poll, by the way. That's weird. How many wins in the next three home games, USC, Washington, Boise State, would convince you, Jerem, BYU has finally turned the corner in defending Lavelle Edwards Stadium? It's between one and two. At least one. Two would be definitely turning a corner. But uh, BYU has beaten one ranked team since 2015 at home. It was Boise State, and it was lucky. It took a Hail Mary. It was lucky. It was a Hail Mary, right? And it was a, an amazing play. It was an amazing play. Like, throwing to Micah Simon is more skill-based than just throwing off your back foot to Mitchell Jurgens in the end zone. Like, there's a lot of luck involved in that, and it was an amazing play, and we'll never forget it, right? But BYU has stunk at home, not just against ranked teams, against everybody, which brings us to the stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Since 2017, BYU's 5-8 at home. What? I mean, a lot of 2017 is going to factor into that, but even last, two and four, but even last year, BYU was three and three at home, looking for a winning record for just the second time in four years under Kalani Satake, and uh, BYU is going to have to knock off a ranked team. BYU's got to get at least one of the yes. next three, and that's kind of asking a lot, right? Underdog, ranked teams, two of those are power five, right? Washington, BYU's had success against at home, and perhaps they're vulnerable. Last week, lost to Cal. USC's interesting. Is this... Is this a totally different USC team? Is Keaton Slovis as a freshman totally different? And then Boise State, BYU's played a lot of close games, but hasn't been able to get over the hump. Two and seven all time against Boise State. Yet, BYU feels like they should have won a couple of those. I am of the opinion that BYU has, has to win one of these next three games to change the rhetoric and give some juice to the home fans. Like, BYU fans are in desperate, desperate need of some type of signature win at home. It just hasn't happened under Kalani Satake. His best win at home, as we talked about earlier this week, 
Mississippi State, 2016, season one. I was a five and seven Bulldogs team, and it took uh, double overtime. Right, I'll take an SC win at home, no matter well, how I, bad that team is. But there, you're right; there needs to be a better win there. And if BYU beats any of these three teams, it will be going away. Number one win, the best win at home for Kalani Satake. Yeah. It won't be close. Mm-hmm. Okay, a Agreed. ranked team in Provo. Upon research yesterday, last ten games for BYU at home, four and six. Last mm-hmm. ten on the road, seven and three. Wow. When did BYU become the Road Warriors? That's what they are right now. Hmm. They got to change the rhetoric, change the narrative. Do you remember when Michael Shelton said what he said and it ticked off all the fans? Well, we just don't have the juice at home. We want to we like playing on the road. Play better on the road. They thrive in the hostile environment. Listen, the team has to give the fans something first. I don't think it's fans to team and then they perform. I think it first goes team performs, fans react, right? But the fans can certainly help and sway. Kalani Satake has talked about this. You can help us win. Yes. So I, I ex- And there was good juice against Utah. That's just a better Utah team. It's just what it is, right? And BYU can get one of the next three. I think that I'm confident that BYU can win one of the next three. I think Boise State's the most likely, though. Now, if the Cougars do win one of the next three, that's enough for me because it's a change. It's a stark change. Uh, win one. Win one of the next three. It wins the minimum. One's the minimum. If you lose all three, uh, you're in trouble. That's a losing record at home. You will have lost four. You're done. Our question of the day. Who will be this week's surprise for BYU against USC? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At 86 WIKoog on Twitter. The whole BYU offense will be a surprise. Not sure it'll be enough, but I think this offense will score 35-plus points. Whoa, need the blue goggles for that. Whoa! Offensive line creates holes for the running backs. Tyson Williams will have his first 100-yard day. Zach Wilson will be protected. And Bushman and wide receivers have great days. 300-plus yards passing. How do you, how do you counter what? how do you counter wide receiver Amon Ra St. Brown, by the way? Fluent in German and French. Mom's German. He lived in Paris in the fourth grade. <laughs> his, he's named after the Egyptian sun god and sky uh Amon Ra and Haru. Dad was Mr. Universe twice. How can BYU match up with that guy is the real question. <laughs> Coming up, did Aleva Hippo summon mystical powers to draw Tyson Williams into the end zone Saturday? Plus, USC football insider Ryan Abraham joins us live. Is he buying the Trojan stock after two weeks as a legit Pac-12 title contender? Whoa. This is BYU Sports Nation. I thought it was about the Utes, man. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. There's only one place to watch BYU and number 24 USC warm-up on TV. Tomorrow it's countdown to kickoff on BYU TV, 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Pacific. We'll chat with Austin Colley, Kalani Sataki, Tyson Williams, Mike Simon, and feature Tristan Hodge in a new Deep Blue. Live from Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play game day eve. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, is Ryan Abraham, who covers USC sports for 247sports.com. Ryan, nice to have you on the show. How are you? Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Should be an exciting college football weekend. Man, and uh, BYU and USC in the national spotlight, ABC afternoon kickoff at beautiful Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and the Trojans through two weeks looking like they may have returned to their 2017 form. Are you buying them right now as a legit Pac-12 title contender and ranked team? Yeah, they got my attention. I'm not buying it completely yet. I don't think Stanford is as good as I thought they were going to be this season. They didn't look great against uh, Fresno State in the opener. Of course, you lose JT Daniels, your starting quarterback. But I think Keaton Slovis is the real deal. More importantly, this offensive scheme is the real deal, bringing in the air raid and Graham Harrell. And the defense looks better. I think they're playing better as a whole. And I'm giving them a much better shot to get through this really tough early part of the season schedule than I did like going into the season. Will the litmus test be Utah next week, you think, to see where uh, USC stands in the Pac-12? I think that's the big one. I mean, it's probably the most important game on the schedule because it's probably, for the Pac-12 South, it will probably come down to those two teams. But there's really no none of the first six games you can overlook. Certainly not you know, on the road, your first test at BYU. And then after Utah, you've got a road game against Washington and a road game against Notre Dame. So they can't really overlook any of these opponents. But the big one, if you want to win the South and try to win the conference, I think is that Utah game next weekend. Ryan Abraham, follow him at Inside Troy on Twitter with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now, depending on which expert in the desert you trust, USC is a four or four and a half point favorite against BYU. 
Do you think that line is fair? Because I think a number of BYU fans are looking at what USC's done, and they think that's probably a little too close. Yeah, it might be. To me, it seems a little too close. But that's if USC's offense can take themselves on the road and perform the same way. They were 90th in the in the country in scoring last year with about the same players, the best wide receiver group in the country. They got good running backs. You got good quarterback play, and they still weren't able to score. I think they're going to score a lot more points this year, and we've seen BYU give up some, some big yards on the run. I think their running game can be better. So, yeah, it seems a little tight for me, but, you know, you don't know. USC going on the road with a true freshman quarterback, is he not going to shine? Uh, in that kind of environment. So maybe that's what's built into the line. But my gut instinct would have been more like a touchdown or something like that. Let's talk about the quarterback, Keaton Slovis. So JT Daniel, unfortunately, tears his ACL at the end of the first half against Fresno State in week one. All of a sudden, hey, true freshman, uh, get in there and do something. Win this game. Beats Fresno State. Beats Stanford. Looks really good in doing so. Now the first road game comes against BYU. Uh, what can you tell us about Keaton Slovis? Yeah, he's a three-star quarterback, which USC doesn't play or start three-star quarterbacks. There have always been four- and five-star guys, even like a Sam Darnold. He was the second quarterback in the class, but he was still a four-star guy. This is a new territory, and I think when he comes in in the spring and looks really good, new offensive coordinator Graham Harrell was really praising him, and everyone's like, yeah, he'll just redshirt. There's three veterans in front of him, but they really liked the way he played. Now, he wasn't able to beat out – JT Daniels, but I think all of the quarterbacks played well. And as a true freshman in this system, he just seemed to shine. He's making the right decisions. He's, you know, has good touch on the ball. I think he's finding the guys who are open. And that's really what this offense is predicated on just finding guys. They're supposed to run the grass. Receivers just run to an open spot, and the quarterback is supposed to find them. And he did that to the tune of, you know, 28 completions in 33 attempts. So, it's going to be tougher, I think, on the road. BYU is going to drop more guys in coverage. He might not, you know, see some defenders that are dropping back. He doesn't expect to be there. Stanford played a lot of man, but the way he played in his first game, uh, really encouraging for USC fans going forward. We'll see if he can continue that against, I think, a tougher BYU secondary. Ryan Abraham, USC football insider for twenty four seven Sports on BYU Sports Nation, is the success story of Keaton Slovis thus far. More about him, or is it more about his elite group of wide receivers? Yeah, I think there's a, a good combination. His group of wide receivers are great, but they had that same group last year, and you didn't see this kind of success. I really think the offensive system with Graham Harrell, they've simplified things. He's come in with a singular uh, notion of what this offense could be. They called it the gumbo the last couple of years because it was a little bit of everything. There was some Sark, there was some Kiffin, there was some Helton and T. Martin, and now it's, you have one voice. He's the quarterback coach. He's the offensive coordinator. And I think everybody's on the same page. He's putting this team and this offense in a situation where they can succeed. And it's helping a true freshman like Keaton Slovis. But certainly having that group of wide receivers where you can just throw it up sometimes if you have to, and they'll make a catch, uh, that helps too. Yeah, the, these guys are tremendous. And during the uh, summer, we'd do a, uh, what we call 10 and 10, and I would preview all the uh, position groups. The receivers for USC suck out so much. So Tyler Vaughns and Amon Ross St. Brown, who's like the most interesting man in college football uh, with his background, <laughs> Michael Pittman, these guys are amazing. Do you expect all three to play in the NFL? Yeah, I think they all will. I mean, you're talking about five-star guys, um, all of them, and uh, you know, you don't get that all the time. Uh, Tyler Vaughns is my guy. Uh, he's been over 100 yards uh, in both games. Uh, people have said he had some drops, but the last the last game there was a couple of pass defended passes defended when he was on there. Michael Pittman hasn't caught a touchdown yet. He did catch one, but it was called back for a for a penalty. I think Amon Ra St. Brown probably has the highest ceiling of those guys. I mean, he's just a special player in the slot, but. Having all those three guys work together, and they're not coming out a lot. They're supposed to rotate in more, and they just like to be out there on the field. So I, I think Graham Harrell's run these successful offenses where you have guys that are kind of like okay wide receivers. I don't think he's run anything like this where you have three really good guys to choose from. Can you tell us more about Amon Ross St. Brown? I, I gave some of his background in the last segment of fluent in German and French and named after the Egyptian sun god Amon Ra and sky god uh, Haru, and dad was uh, Mr. Universe and Mr. World as a bodybuilder. This guy's, like, amazing. He has so much to talk about. Yeah, he's interesting. Modern-day high school, a five-star athlete. You know, his, you know, his brother played at Notre Dame. Uh, you know, you got Osiris. Uh, Equinamius, and then Amon Ra. So there's some really interesting That's names. Awesome. And it, 
their names were his last name was originally Brown, and he changed it to St. Brown to be a little more exotic. And of course, he gives his sons the exotic names. But to have all three of them playing big time Division One uh, college football and all playing at a high level is pretty amazing. And he's obviously a fitness nut. And you see a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown when he came in, he didn't look like a true freshman. So I think that gave him a little bit of a a leg up. But him and and uh, J T Daniels, you know, went to high school together, so it really helped him you know, jumpstart his freshman season when JT started 11 of those games. We've talked a lot about the placement of this game in USC's schedule and how it might be a benefit to BYU with the Trojans at 2-0, knowing they've got a huge game against Utah in a short week coming up in L.A., that this might be a trap scenario for the Trojans. Is that fool's gold for BYU fans to buy into this might be a trap game for the Trojans? No, I, I think that's 100% right. Clay Helton tried to address that this week. I mean, they were sky high with all the negativity around this program for the last nine months. And every interview I did was talking about how, you know, what is Clay Helen going to be fired? And all, they hear all that. And they knew they had to go on the field and prove everyone wrong. I don't think they did against Fresno State. It was an eight-point game, and Fresno State was driving at the end. But then to go out against Stanford and, and you know, go on a 42-3 to run, they felt so good about that. Can you keep that up? Can you keep that high going and still play at a high level now, instead of, you know, in the Coliseum, you're going to do it on the road, knowing that you have Utah, Washington, and Notre Dame coming up. There, I, I think it would be hard to not overlook this one a little bit. So that's got to be their focus because, you know, BYU is, can be a complete giant killer. Uh, I love the way Zach Wilson plays. So if they overlook this at all, I don't think it's going to go well for the Trojans. Ryan, it's great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the insight uh, into USC football and some more details on Amon Ross St. Brown. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, You guys. got it. Ryan Abraham on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how. Warren G's son, Elijah Griffin, yeah. is also on the team. I mean, there's a lot of personality going on there. Time to That's regulate. <laughs> yeah, mount up. Let's go. <laughs> Coming up, how well do we know the foe? And Aleva Hifo, one-on-one after practice. Why does he like BYU's chances to be a giant killer against USC? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hey, if your name's not named Jason Shepard, listen, we are giving away a BYU helmet signed by head coach Kalani Sitake tomorrow on Countdown to Kickoff. It's right here on the set, and it is beautiful. Visit the BYU TV Sports, BYU Sports Nation, or BYU TV Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages, and follow the instructions on the post for your chance to win. We're handing it out tomorrow afternoon. Look at the way that royal blue chrome trim sparkles in the studio. I try not to look at it because I get jealous. (laughs) That thing's nice. Here are today's BYU Sports Station headlines for a second time. Game day eve. The Cougars host 24th ranked USC tomorrow. Let's go. 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC College Football Spectacle. BYU head coach Kalani Sataki working for his first career home victory against a ranked opponent. Countdown to kickoff starts at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, live on BYU TV. Cougs in the NFL this weekend. Taysom Hill and the Saints play the Rams on the road. Look out for pass interference in that one. And reportedly, Seattle Seahawks defensive lineman Ziggy Ansah is likely to debut for my Seahawks against the Steelers Sunday. 10th ranked BYU women's soccer handles number 12. Texas A&M 2-0 last night at Southfield to remain unbeaten at 5-0 and legitimize that top 10 ranking a little bit more. Elise Flake with the brace. Scores both goals in a three-minute span. Cougars play at Utah Valley on Monday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. She braced so hard. Yes, she did. And five former Cougars will be inducted into the BYU Athletic Hall of Fame tonight as hosted by your boy, Spencer Kent Linton. Mm -hmm. They are Austin Collie of football, volleyball's Carlos Moreno, gymnastics' Elizabeth Crandall Holmes, track and field's Craig Poole, and swimming's Arunas Savickas. Congratulations. It's time we go. BYU Sports Nation All Access with BYU football wide receiver Aleva Hefel. One-on-one after practice, why he likes the Cougars chances against USC and yeah what of those magical powers to help Tyson Williams into the end zone here we go Aleva let's start with the final play of the Tennessee game your magical powers waving Tyson Williams and the entire offensive line in what were you seeing in the on that play and, and what prompted you to do that it was funny because uh we had an RPO call so I had a slant as my primary um primary objective in that play so when I ran my slant I ended up being four, four, three yards in the end zone. And as I look back, I, I, I kind of see like the Ty, Tyson's demeanor as he was pushing that pile. He was leaning forward, two hands on the ball, 
and I, I just knew he was going to score. So I was like, oh, shoot, like, he's still moving. Like, that pile is still moving. So then I kind of just waved once, and he kept moving. I kept waving and waving, and it was just a bunch of adrenaline, just reacting to the whole situation and just fun overall. So that's, that's kind of how the whole play played out. Now, I know mentally your team, and, and as you should, you've, you've moved on to USC in preparation. The Tennessee high was fantastic. But as you now look ahead to another ranked opponent from the Pac-12 coming to Lavelle Edwards Stadium, what's the first thing that goes through your mind when I say USC? Um, a, a team with a lot of tradition, a team that has a lot of history of being really good. Um, being a Southern California kid myself, I grew up watching them a lot more than BYU, I hate to say, but um, otherwise that, it's going to be a it's going to be a really good challenge for us. Um, USC comes in, as you said, ranked. Um, they, had, they were very successful the last two games, and they have a lot of talent all across the board. So for us, it's going to be really good for us to defend our, our stadium here at home. What have you learned about their defense and what BYU can do to try and exploit some things against the Trojans? They're a little similar to what we faced the last two weeks. Um, secondary, they're very skilled. They have guys that will go man coverage all the time. Um, they have a good linebacker core and D-line. And, and for us, we're going to have to be able to stay consistent on every play. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot anymore. We have to make sure that we're assignment sound, we're having no pre-snap penalties, and no turnovers. And ultimately, I feel like we can play with anyone when that happens. What kind of emotion has existed with this team in practice this week, given the emotional high that you're coming off from Tennessee? Yeah, it's a little different. Um, coming from Utah, we came off a loss, so we, we kind of put our heads down and we need to work. And this week, it needs to be the same thing. Although we won, we also need to make sure that we're still putting our heads down and still working. Um, that, Like I said, that loss is behind us and that win is also behind us. And we need to focus on this next week and making sure that we're working the same. What was priority number one after you watched film from the Tennessee game for the BYU offense? For our offense, we just make sure that we need to stay in drives. We need to keep our defense off the field. We need to be able to control, control the clock and control the ball and make sure that we... Yeah, our defense has been bailing us out of a lot of things. We, we, we need to kind of flip that and make sure that we put up a lot of points this week. What has Zach Wilson done after two weeks to show improvements that you're seeing from your quarterback that makes you feel like, okay, we can go and score points against USC? Yeah, he deserves, he deserves, deserves a lot more credit than he gets. Um, for him to be understanding everyone's position on the field, everyone's assignment, for him to be in a stadium like Tennessee where it's loud and he has to think about everyone's assignments, and for him to be, be poised, keep his poise and be calm in situations like that, it's definitely good for Zach, and, and he's only getting better at it. So, When you see guys like Talon Shumway and Micah Simon step up and make big plays at the end of regulation and in overtime, what does it do to define this wide receiver group? Because I think that, that we're all trying to figure out what this, this group is. What would you say this group of receivers is? It was good for us. Um, throughout the whole game, I, I wouldn't say we were as productive as we could have been. And it was very good for us to finish the way that we did as receivers, um, coming out and completing passes like that and having Micah just save the game like that. And Talon, his only catch was that touchdown. But whether it was his only catch or his 10th catch, he made it, he made it count. So for us receivers, it's good to, that when we have our number called, we're ready for it. So it's good for us in the future that our coaches can look to us and know that we can be a threat to the field. So. Fessy Satake is a man of many talents. We've seen him in the film room. I just saw him punting the ball back here like 50 yards. But he prides himself on being great in the, in the details. What's the, what's the number one detail that he hounds you guys on week in and week out, practice in, practice out? Making sure that we're serious when, need, when we need to be. Make sure that we have a switch when there's a time to be, to be working and to be serious and there's a time where we can kind of goof off and mess around a little bit. And that's the type of person that he is. He, he respects us enough as, as adults, I would say, and, and as receivers and players and making sure that we're taking ownership for ourselves. For, so for Fessy, it's making sure that we're working when we need to be. Everybody talks about balance. The offense wants to have balance. Uh, when you prepare for a team like USC, and they do have athletes all over the field, how do you not specify one side, like go run heavy or pass heavy? How do you find that balance? Uh, we've kind of always seen it as fighting for the ball. We, we have really good running backs. We have really good tight ends, and we have, good, and we have a good quarterbacks, quarterbacks, and we also have a good receiving core. So how we, how we, how we all see it as an as offensive unit is um, making sure that we want, we want the ball. And it's kind of like in our mindset, we want to win overall, but making sure that whoever wants the ball to utilize that opportunity that we have. And that's what we're going to try to do for this week at USC is not just one group of and position um, kind of shining in that way, but everyone. So that's, that's, that's what it is for us. Now, I've talked to you about this on a couple occasions, but there's just something about the energy that BYU plays with when they're on the road. Like, I don't know what it is, but, like, the juice is high. How do you bring that back to your home stadium? Understanding the, the legacy that we have there at Lavelle Edwards, um, the name itself, it's, it's really good. It's a, it's a legendary name, and, and the reason why the stadium is named that stadium is because of what they've done in the past there at that stadium. So for us, it's, it's important that we protect it 
And whenever teams come to our stadium here in Utah, we need to make sure that we take advantage of the opportunity of our crowd here at home. Why do you feel like BYU can win a second game in a row and be the first team to beat USC this season? It'll be big for us. Obviously, like I said, we need to stay consistent. But being at home, I know that we'll, we'll have a lot, of, a lot of fans there to support us coming off a big big road win like that. And us understanding that, that we want to take advantage of being here at home, like I said. so. If you were to pump up the defense knowing that they are facing a freshman quarterback who's 18 in his first road start at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, what would, you, what would you say to the defensive members of your team right before the game? Uh, kind of just chirp at them a little bit. Uh, our defense is very good at that. Uh, they do it to us as well. They, uh, they have some players on that side of the field who aren't afraid to talk, and I think that's really good for them to to kind of uh, get, get, get in his head if they can. Um, being, us being at home, it'll, it'll be real, very loud for him in third down situations or any situation like that. So for our defense, my only advice with them to be would just to kind of fluster him a little bit. Clearly the chirping doesn't phase you, though, right? Oh, no. I, I see these guys every day in the locker room, and I see people like – and the SEC, all the trivia, that, that stuff. That was probably the loudest stadium I ever played in, but it was good for us just to just to keep calm. Aleva, we hope that you and your magical powers can pull some more touchdowns into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Good luck against USC. Yeah, thank you. Aleva Hifo, BYU Sports Nation All Access, yeah, one yeah. on one after more practice. More touchdowns. Yes. Yeah, more Come touchdowns. Come on, baby. He was. Let's go. He was Cougar Nation in that moment. <laughs> Come on. Come on. After the touchdown, Jerem, you know what we should do? Go for two. No, PAT. Can you predict the future? Yep. These guys think they can. We're going for two on BYU Sports Nation. Week three of going for two presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Jeremy, you've got a three-to-one lead after going two for two last week, and I didn't score a single point. You know what? I didn't really care, though, because BYU beat Tennessee, and it was just all happy. I care. (laughs) I'm going to pick first this week. Let's go. Yeah. Number one. USC, as a team, will have less than 125 yards rushing. They're averaging 147 a game Uh in their first two. This is with an air raid, by the way. BYU's giving up 252 a game, third worst in college football. I think it's going to be under half that for BYU, 125 or less for USC. Number two, BYU won the turnover battle last week. One. Plus one. Zero. Okay, plus one. I don't think that the Cougars are going to turn over the Trojans a ton. So I'm going to say that BYU will have one takeaway or less against USC, even with that air raid offense in Provo. Those are good, good tries. Pick one. <laughs> Zach Wilson will throw for 250-plus. I think, I think he wakes up a little bit, and he gets 250. Okay? He sees the air raid, and he goes, I'll see your air raid and raise you an air raid. Right? I think USC's prone to giving up 250 in the air. Fresno State had some success. Granted, their quarterback ran a lot. Reina, I think Zach Wilson needs to run a little more. Okay. okay, But he'll throw for 250. And pick two. We go head-to-head on this one. BYU will get two plus 10. Oh. I believe the BYU def- defense, like St. Helens, will erupt in this one and get two-plus takeaways. At one point in my yard in Vancouver, Washington, I could look to my right and see Mount Hood and my left and see Mount St. Helens on a clear day. Oh, it's beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, in the, in the uh, what is it, 3 three six zero? Uh-huh. In the five zero three. Love it. I'm hedging my bets on this head-to-head pick. Okay. Because if you win that Hedger. one, then, then you take a significant lead. <laughs> or we, uh, or you get one, you know? Or maybe, I don't know. It is kind of fun to go head-to-head. Yeah. I don't want to go head-to-head on everyone. No, no, no. But no, on but occasionally, some of them. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think at the end of last year, we started to go head-to-head every time. Just to yeah. make things more interesting. Right. It is. It's okay. compelling. Compelling and rich. That's, those are our two mottos. Yes. And uh, the juvenile hijinks, right? <laughs> Coming up, who says BYU women's soccer is in, in line for a top two seed? Oh, snap. They beat number 12 last night. Ooh. And know the fall with the USC Trojans. Have you brushed up on your Wikipedia? <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. No. <laughs> but I read the game... This segment brought to you by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Jason Shepard and Riley Nelson get you ready for BYU versus 24th ranked USC on Cougar pregame live tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific on BYU Radio and the app. I think we need a picture of Jason. And Riley, if we say Jason yes. and Riley, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, Ben Bagley's going to host like six of these, right? So Ben wasn't in the photo. I, I think it's kind of odd that he wasn't. Maybe we should just show Ben and Jason. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe just Ben. That. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just Ben. Ben, the primary host of yeah. that show. 
<laughs> right now he's going to do seven. Based right? on Jason Shepard's yeah. uh, travels yeah. with women's soccer. It is what it is, Jason. Okay. Just get over it. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It's time now that we play Know the Foe, presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. BYU Sports Nation asks, do you know the foe? Kind of. We think we might know a little bit about USC. I mean, they are a well-known traditional powerhouse, so we should get at least a few of these, right? Right? Ben, what do you have for us? The chances are low. And just a quick correction there, it's actually seven of the games I'll be filling in. Yeah. Or am I filling in? That's the question. Like yeah. I said, primary host. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Before the show, we did a uh, official coin flip, and Jerem won, and he chose to defer to the second half. So, Spencer, you get I the did? first question. Yes. <laughs> oh. You were there, right? Remember? <laughs> yeah, All right, me Spencer, and Jerome Bettis. Okay. We'll start easy as we usually do because you guys need a warm up. True or false? USC has more national titles in athletics than, it ha- than any other school in the NCAA. False. I think it's Stanford. Wow. It's UCLA. No, no extra points for getting Stanford correct. Oh, it is. Stanford's number one with 123, UCLA 117, then USC 107. Truly Whoa. the conference of champions. That's a lot. Thanks, Bill Walton. The conference That's of champions. That's a lot of water polo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Jerem. Yes. True or false? USC once had an unofficial mascot by the name of George Tirebiter. Uh, that would be false. <laughs> That's true. George was a dog on campus to chase cars and once bit the UCLA mascot. <laughs> George Tire Biter? He, he, yes, he actually has a statue on campus. Really? Yes. <laughs> we, can't, George, we can't get a statue of anybody. They have a statue of a dog? Yes, named by George Tire Biter. Tire Biter. All right, Spencer, you're up 1-0. Here's your next question. Does USC football boast more Heisman Trophy winners or national championships? Ooh, good question. Oh, man. I'm going to go with Heisman Trophy winners on this one, Ben. Oh, it's more national championships. It is. 11 national championships, six, asterisk, seven Heisman Trophy winners. Okay. (laughs) I see what you did there, Reginald Bush. Boy, that was a killer question, Ben. Wow. That was a good question. All right, Jerem. Finally, a great one. Chance to tie it up. Thank you, guys. (laughs) Who has more college bowl, bowl game appearances, USC or Alabama? Ooh, good question. I, was, I thought you were going to say BYU. Oh, uh, that's an easy one. I will go USC or Alabama. I'll go with uh, USC. Mm. Oh, okay. No, it's Alabama. 66 to 54. They are the top two, though. Is there a second half? I would like to go first again. <laughs> <laughs> you get the ball off the half. Can I get the ball? Okay. Here we go. Which of the following, Spencer, is not a USC football player and actor okay. in a Hollywood? Hollywood. O.J. Simpson, John Wayne, Tim Rosevich, or Carl Weathers? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Carl Weathers. <laughs> I'm going to go with C, Tim Rosevich. No. Carl Weathers. He played at Long Beach City College. So John Wayne played for USC? John Wayne was a tackle on the USC I, football wow. teams in 25 and 26. Yes, I knew John Wayne played. Obviously, O.J. Simpson, but I was not sure about the last two. O.J. Simpson played at USC? What? Said no one. All right, Jerem. Chance once again to tie it up. Which of the following is not a USC football player in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Oh, boy. <laughs> Willie Wood, Frank Gifford, Tony Baselli. Or Bruce Matthews. Good luck. What were the first two again? <laughs> Willie Wood and Frank Gifford. Maybe you've heard of Frank Gifford. Did, uh, yeah, of course. Did he? I'll go A. Mm, no, is it Frank it's, Gifford. It's Tony Baselli. Tony, Tony Baselli is not in in Injury the short career. No, not in the not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Really? Didn't didn't uh, Tony Danza play that guy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Tony Baselli never was. Wow. I think his name's Tony no, Baselli he, he, in that no, show. No, not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All right, Spencer. Okay. Which of the following actors is not a USC alum? LeVar Burton, Tom Selleck, Joey Lawrence, or James Franco? Oh. Uh, I'm going to go with A, LeVar Burton. Oh, no. Joey a USC alum. Reading Rainbow. What was it, the answer? It's James Franco. It's he James went to UCLA. Franco. USC has an amazing film school. Oh. Yeah, they are like the film Like school, top right? three in the country. Now, speaking of which, Jeremy, that leads us to your question. Which of the following directors is not a USC alum? Okay. George Lucas, Judge, Judd Apatow, Francis Ford Coppola, or Who? Brian Singer? I'll go Brian Singer, D. No, it's Francis Ford Coppola. He's also a UCLA grad. 
<laughs> these are impossible. Th th these are hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I well, knew I, that George Lucas went to USC. The, the film school's named after him. Right? Uh, we're like one for eight. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly that? what it is, and that's all I've got. I've got, I've got a tiebreaker, but you guys didn't tie. So I, Let, let's hear it anyway. Both all right, here you go. Yeah. Uh, USC has had four coaches since Pete Carroll to the, uh, the current Clay Helton regime. Okay. Yeah. Name them. Lane Kiffin. Correct. Yeah. Steve Sarkeesian. Yes. Who's the, yeah, who's the other one? There, there two more. Four? There are two, two more. more? Yeah. Did uh, What's-His-Bucket from Washington? No, he didn't. LeVar Burton? No, he didn't do that. No. 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 Who, who, who are the other two? I want to say, like, John Robinson, but that was way before. No, that was that way, was way before. Carol. Clay Helton was the interim head coach in the 2013 Las Vegas right, Bowl. Right, right. So okay, so that, does that current, count as one? That counts as one. Okay. And the other one, a very obvious one you guys are missing. Oh, no. Oh, no. The oh, current no. head coach at LSU, our good buddy. Oh, Ed Orgeron. Cajun, oh, Cajun Ed Orgeron. Ed Orgeron, USA. Yeah. USA I'm going to go out and win that game, boys. I'm going to ball and move down the field. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, nice. there you go. Thank okay. you, sir. Love you, bye. I'm glad that we know nothing. Yeah, we, we feel great about ourselves. Do we know the foe? The answer is clearly no. Oh, boy. The foe. Coming up, revenge and a debut for Cougars in the NFL. And if you have missed this story, the University of Tennessee did something so unbelievably oh, awesome this week. Amazing. Amidst the disappointment of losing to BYU. Grab the tissues. This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation, presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Shout out to today's guests, Ryan Abraham, USC football insider for 24-7 sports and BYU wide receiver Aleva Hefo. Shows on demand via the podcast and the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Cougars in the NFL. Taysom Hill and the New Orleans Saints travel to Los Angeles for a showdown with the Rams and a rematch of last year's crazy NFC title game. Also, according to reports, Seahawks defensive end Ziggy Ansah likely to debut when Seattle takes on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fred Warner and the Niners play at Cincinnati, your team. Michael Davis and the Chargers play in Detroit, and Jamal Williams and the Packers host the Vikings. Kyle Van Noy set for his first game of the season as a new father. When the New England Patriots travel to face the Miami Dolphins, Daniel Sorensen, Andy Reid, and the Kansas City Chiefs will take on the Raiders in Oakland. Soccer. Number 10, BYU beat number 12, Texas A&M 2-0 last night at Southfield with two goals in three minutes. That's called a brace. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard of that, Spencer. Yep. From Elise uh, Flake and Bake. Yeah. Athletics News. Five former Cougars set to be inducted into the BYU Athletic Hall of Fame tonight. They are as follows. Austin Colley of BYU Football, Volleyball's Carlos Moreno, Gymnastics' Elizabeth Crandall Holmes, Track and Field's Craig Poole, and Swimming's Arunas Savickas. Men's basketball. The Pac-12 Network announced the BYU-Utah basketball game on December 4th will air at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Volleyball. 13th-ranked BYU beats Wichita State three sets to one on the road yesterday. The team, led by McKenna Miller with a season-high 17 kills, Kennedy Eschenberg had a career-high 13 kills. Cougars in the PGA. We should mention with women's volleyball, they're taking on number three Texas tonight. Let's 5.30 Eastern. Oh, that's, that's a huge a shocker match. classic. Yep. Daniel Summerhays is two under. Zach Blair's four over at a military tribute at the Greenbrier in the opening tournament of the PGA Tour season. Back to you. Today's rise and shout out a combined effort. Jeremy and I wholeheartedly love this story. There was a kid in Tennessee who wanted to wear the, his favorite school colors. He wore an orange shirt and he pinned on paper a handwritten UT for University of Tennessee. He was uh, picked on and bullied with this. This is in a Florida school, by oh, the way. Oh, sorry, Florida. Thank you. Uh, and Tennessee got word of this, and they sent him a ton of swag, and then they just announced yesterday. And this, this got us emotional when we were looking at this. Class of 2032, a four-year scholarship for this kid. Oh. And the T-shirt is now an official T-shirt um, in the Vol shop, and I bought it this morning. Can't wait till I get it. Uh, there have been 20,000 orders for this shirt. Incredible. Awesome. Bullying stinks yes don't bully people so happy yeah. for this kid yeah he's got all of his tennessee i'm glad gear. this turned into something nice. oh it's it's unbelievable and what a what an effort from tennessee like i just love that they've done it so much yes and i feel bad for that kid you and i were like hey we felt we, like that yes. kid in elementary school yes so i'm great that this turned out to be something good like he didn't something have positive. all the money to have the cool stuff right and like so right. he made his own shirt oh that's awesome love it so much 
Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Answering who's going to be the surprise for BYU against USC. At Zach underscore Zilla 66 says on Twitter. The surprise will be the crowd noise rattling the USC quarterback and causing false starts. Okay, BYU-USC tomorrow. Can't wait. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. We're Jerem. I'm Spencer. Shout out to the Vol Store for that t-shirt. And a shout out to former BYU big man Spencer Need. He played against USC in 2003. We'll see you for Countdown to kick off tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, live on BYU TV. Go Cougs!